Hey guys, thanks for watching Beyond Science, it's Mikey Chen. You know, when I first heard that uh, vampire bats were a real thing, I was kind of freaked out. But then I did some research and was informed that they usually only feed on the blood of creatures like birds and cattle. And instead of feeling a bit relieved, I thought, I bet these things are just settling for animals and would 100% suck a human dry if they had the chance. I mean, come on, you can't trust anything that sucks blood to stay alive. That's why it didn't really surprise me when recent news reports are saying that these vampire bats have been caught feeding on human beings and this is a huge problem in more ways than one first of all it's it's a bat sucking your blood that's terrifying enough but vampire bats are also known to transmit rabies so the disease could possibly spread everywhere if these bats continue to feed on humans researchers believe that the vampire bats are able to enter houses through holes in the roof or windows as well as target people sleeping outside so time to install that extra door and grab some garlic and if you're wondering how the researchers found out that the bats were feeding on human blood. It was done through an experiment at the Federal University of Pernambuco in Brazil where a test was made to see what vampire bats would do if there was a scarcity of birds to feed on. These particular breed of vampire bats, also known as the hairy-legged vampire bats, inhabit forests in northeastern Brazil and are one of the three species of vampire bats that feed only on blood. Researchers analyzed 70 feces samples from these bats in a cave in Cantambal National Park, Brazil and found that three of the 70 samples had human blood in them. This was surprising to them because in previous experiments, the bats actually starved themselves to death instead of drinking the pig or goat blood that was available to them, but this time they actually drink human blood. Apparently, the reason why bats don't usually feed on mammal blood is because mammal blood is thicker and harder for the bat system to process. But I guess humans don't really have that problem. You know, in Chinese belief, if a wild animal sucks a human's blood or eats human flesh, it becomes like a like an animal demon. And once it had a taste of human blood or flesh, it's only going to target human beings. So I don't know, maybe we're going to see a bunch of bat demons flying out of Brazil one day. Anyway, one of the explanations for this phenomenon is that birds are getting harder and harder to find, so the bats are resorting to such bloody measures. An earlier study has shown that about half of the 510 species of birds in Brazil are very sensitive to any disturbances by humans, so if we continue to destroy their habitats and they disappear completely, then maybe the vampire bats in the region will just really go on a rampage, turn into vampires, and then there you go, vampire apocalypse. I just want to say, if that happens, that would really suck. Next up, apparently two teenage girls aged 13 and 16 were hospitalized in Peru after they were found possessed by strange chain messages sent to them through WhatsApp. And if you don't know, WhatsApp is a very popular messaging application. These messages were supposedly satanic and somehow took over the girls, making them roll around the floor and babble incoherently in their home in southern Peru. Their family called the paramedics immediately after they saw what was happening, but somehow found the time to actually film the girls. The video shows the two teenagers wailing as help rushed to their sides. They seem to be possessed, but was this really a supernormal demonic attack or was it just someone's sick idea of a joke? We really don't know. The footage shows the girls wearing PJs and appearing to suffer from what looks like convulsions. Apparently, the girls were also sedated before being brought to the hospital as reported by a neighbor who witnessed the whole thing. The doctors at the hospital couldn't really shed more light on the situation. They they only said that the girls were in a historical state when they arrived. Okay, a couple of things doesn't really add up for me here. First of all, don't all teenage girls just babble incoherently anyway? And, and let's say this was real and the girls were indeed possessed. Explain something to me. Is the, is the devil using WhatsApp now? And if that is the case, can you now exercise demons through the use of instant messaging? I guess this could happen because, I mean, the, the ring girl was killing people through videotapes. By the way, just a random bit of information. I know the, the second ring, uh, the ring sequel is coming out. I just want to say that uh, the last horror movie I have ever seen in its entirety was The Ring. And after that, I, I couldn't watch any horror movies. I was so freaked out after watching that movie. And I was on a date, actually, watching the first ring movie. I just want to say Yep, scream like a little girl. Not a good date. And lastly, guys, this week is really exciting because the magazine, the Beyond Science magazine, will be coming out in just a few days. Our research team is already hard at work putting the content together, and they found some really interesting facts on mermaid sightings and even possible evidence for an ancient nuclear war that predates the modern history of mankind. So I hope you guys will have as much fun learning about this stuff as we did finding it. Anyway, the magazine will be launched on January 28th. I think that's a Saturday. And like I've said before, this is going to be the first digital magazine to invest 
investigate and report on the crazy things that science can't explain. Because we want to be certain that this magazine reports on the things you most want to learn about, and we want to do something super special for the first 100 people who signs up, we will give the first 100 subscribers the power to vote on future article topics. So you will decide what we put in future issues of the magazine, and you will have a significant voice in shaping what this project will become. We're calling it the Beyond Science Council. And again, that will only be available to the first 100 subscribers. So if you want the best chance of becoming one of the first 100 subscribers or else just want early access to the magazine, then you can actually click on the link in the description box and enter your email. That way I can let you know when the magazine goes live before it's announced on this channel or on the Thunderclap. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.